Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My name is Ryan Narayan and my guest today is Rul Schoenberg, uh, Senior Antivirus Researcher in the Global Research and Analysis Team. Rul, uh, let's start right off the bat. It's been uh, almost a year since Stuxnet, uh, which kind of opened a lot of people's eyes to uh, the vulnerable nature of uh, industrial control systems and those, the type of software products that drive all these uh, you know, industrial systems. Mm -hmm. Has anything changed in the last year as it relates to uh, the mindset of software developers, administrators managing ICS environments? Has anything changed in the mindset towards getting more secure or has it stayed the same over the last year? I think that's a, that's a very hard question. I think that for the first six months uh, after the discovery of Stuxnet, so let's say until the end of 2010, mm -hmm. nothing really changed. Um, some security researchers got interested, but overall, um, fr from what I was able to gather, none of the, the companies behind the, the, the systems actually got more interested in security, which obviously was a little bit worrisome. Now, when we look at 2011, it seems that more security researchers right. uh, have gotten interested. There have been uh, numerous disclosures of vulnerabilities, and maybe slowly some of these um, companies are, are getting uh, the, the hint that they need to man up. Uh, also, what we have seen is that the Department of Homeland Security in the U.S. has uh, now dedicated more resources into uh, the, uh, defending critical infrastructure, but it's hard to say how much that is paying off right now. And on, on the software vendor side, uh, there was a general a year ago, I mean, we did a webcast a year ago on this very topic, maybe just less than a year ago, uh, where we talk about uh, on the software developer side, I, the guys who make these ICS software, uh, there was a general disinterest in security. It became, functionality, became, functionality became much more important than security. Do you get a sense that we're starting to see secure development lifecycle type uh, systems being put into place uh, or being backported to existing ICS systems or are they very much the same? I think they are definitely not being uh, backported right now. Uh, what we need to keep in mind is that, unfortunately, the, the industrial control uh, world uh, functions co completely different to the IT world. In, in ICS, uh, uptime is everything and n not uh, anything else, not security. Right. And w with that uptime in mind, we see uptimes in, in that world of 30 years or so. So, so even if uh, the, the SDL kicks in, uh, in in 2011, it may take 10 or 20 years before, before we actually right. before we actually see it deployed. Uh, you, you, you mentioned just recently uh, the increased interest in uh, vulnerability researchers looking at ICS type things. There's been some news in the headlines recently around uh, uh, you know a security researcher going to a conference and then stopping his talk and then there's word that he's going to uh, do this presentation at Black Hat. Do you expect to see more and more researchers kind of looking for headlines and trying to get uh, uh, publicity around their work or is it a genuine uh, a genuine interest in actually finding vulnerabilities and getting things fixed? I think it's a genuine interest overall. Uh, w when you look at uh, quite a lot of these uh, vulnerabilities that are being discovered, this, uh, that's really stuff that we haven't seen for, for over five years. The, the nature of the vulnerabilities is really, really simple. And in effect, uh, if you look at Stuxnet and the ramifications thereof, you really see that uh, the industrial control world has, has effectively been uh, moved into, uh, into the, well, there has been 20 years that, that, that passed by in half a year or so. Right, so, right. so it's they're, definitely... It's, it's, they're moving at a fast, fast, fast pace. Yes, and it's going to be very tough for these companies uh, to, to, to handle that accurately. Do you see any sort of parallels between a lot of the high-profile targeted attacks we're seeing in the news every day? I mean, there's, a, there's not a new day you log on to a news website and not see it a high profile target a, a high profile company fall victim to a target do you see any parallels between the the, the kinds of uh, this type of cyber crime against big businesses and this the, the kinds of cyber sabotage that we kind of link closely to the ICS systems do you see any sort of parallels between who the attackers are and who the victims are um, well, I, I think there are, there are di different parallels actually because uh, w because of Stuxnet we generally 
tend to think of cyber sabotage when we think of industrial control right. systems. But it doesn't have to be the, the case because uh, knowing how a plant operates uh, is very uh, interesting uh, intellectual and property. Potentially lucrative for competitive reasons. And, uh, yeah. Exactly. So um, th th these companies, just as other big uh, corporations may be getting compromised left and right as well. We just don't know about it right now because th they are not disclosing it because there is no uh, PII involved, so right. there is no uh, need to disclose it. Right, right. So you're, you're suggesting there's a lot of ownage happening as we speak that uh, we may or may not ever hear about. Uh, g given uh, the, the examples we have seen, uh, for instance, during conferences when some security researchers talked about their examples, it was uh, very easy uh, to, to get in. Right. And, uh, and with that notion, it's hard to believe that uh, there are not at least a few getting right. owned here and there. And if you take it to the logical extension of how these ICS type attacks happen, you can see things like extortion playing a big role um, in this. What is, just let's wrap up quickly uh, on what is the worst case scenario for, uh, I don't want you giving bad guys ideas about what they should do, but you mean what, what, as you think of ICS and vulnerabilities and exposure to risk, what scares you the most? Well, that, that, that's a really tough question and there are indeed many uh, possibilities, as you mentioned, extortion or, or simply sabotage and uh, just uh, either of those can be, can be very scary, uh, certainly if, if the bad guys would be able to, to scale, if you're not talking just a single city but a common vulnerability or in an right. entire and country or something. I get the sense we're not prepared for something like that. Um, Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> On that note, thank you very much, Rul. <laughs> and thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check out some additional webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.